checked in. It's the Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Made him perfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the Raggy Dolls and say I just don't care. Cause Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Are happy just to be. Raggy Dolls. The Raggy Dolls were on holiday, cruising the Mediterranean Sea on a luxury ship. It was all thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Grimes getting married and going on honeymoon. Unbeknown to the newlyweds, the Raggy Dolls had come with them and were having a marvellous time sightseeing. They had been to the Rock of Gibraltar, sailed on up the Spanish coast to Barcelona and across to the island of Corsica. Now they were leaving the port of Ajaxio, birthplace of Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of France. How did he become Emperor? demanded Sadsa. He was formidable, said Claude. He fought many battles in Spain, Italy, Austria, Russia, Angleterre. <laughs> Sounds like he fought just about everybody, observed back to front. I don't see why he wanted to leave his nice little house in Corsica, said Lucy. It seemed so peaceful there. Are oui? we? shrugged Claude. Plus ça change. The raggy doll sat in the sun, enjoying the fresh sea breeze. Thoughts about war and peace and the reasons why were much too difficult on a sunny day like this. I'm too hot said Sadzak at last. Me too, said Dotty. I'd adore a swim. If only we had a swimming pool like the other passengers, sighed Princess. No problem, said Back to Front. We'll make our own private one, up here. No one ever comes up here, not even the crew. But how, demanded Lucy. We'll improvise, said Back to Front. Let's split up and look for anything useful. Good thinking, said Dotty. In no time at all, the Raggy Dolls had found lots of useful things. Dotty and Claude found some spare deck chair cushions. Princess and Lucy had found a large waterproof sheet. While Back to Front and Hi-Fi found a stack of extra life belts. I'm sure it'll be all right to borrow a couple of these, said Back to Front. But what Sad Sack found was completely unexpected. He had gone towards the back of the ship and standing on the deck just below him was Napoleon Bonaparte. Wow, he thought, I must tell the others. And he hurried off as fast as his legs could carry him. Little did he know that Napoleon was being videoed by none other than Mrs. Grimes. Oh, come on, Ozzy, she said. Don't be stuffy. Put your hand in your coat, just like Napoleon did. But Cynthia, you know I shouldn't be up here. It says quite plainly, no admittance. Officers and crew only. But it's such a good angle, pleaded Mrs. Grimes. No one will mind. It's only for a moment. Meanwhile, Sadzak had found the others. <gasps> He's here, he puffed. Who, said Lucy, getting nervous. <gasps> Him, panted Sadzak. Napoleon Bonyparts. Don't be ridiculous, said Dotty. You must be mistaken. Come and see for yourselves, insisted Sadsack. The Raggy Dolls got there, just as the first officer and chief steward arrived. Getting ready for the fancy dress ball, sir, inquired the chief steward politely. Uh, what? Oh, oh, yes, that's right, said Mr. Grimes, all flustered. Jolly good, sir, said the first officer. But strictly speaking, passengers are not allowed on this deck even if they are dressed up like an emperor. Yes, I know. I mean, oh, aren't they? I'm very sorry. He made his way down the stairs back to Mrs. Grimes. Hm. Very original, muttered the first officer. Aye, sighed the chief steward. I bet there'll be at least 14 Napoleons at the ball tonight. And goodness knows how many Josephines, agreed the first officer. The Raggy Dolls waited until they'd gone and then burst out laughing. 
<laughs> Poor old Grimes, he chuckled back to front. Did you see his face? He was so embarrassed, giggled Princess. How was I to know it wasn't really Napoleon, grumbled Sad Sack. Come on, said Dotty. Let's get on with making our pool. Then we can all cool off. The Ragged Dolls decided to make their very own luxury deck at the front of the ship, so they could see where they were going. But no sooner had they spread out the cushions and stacked the life belts on top of each other than the ship's hooter gave a mighty blast. The Ragged Dolls all jumped, and Lucy's knees were still knocking when Dotty decided they should find somewhere else. How can anyone relax with that thing likely to go off at any moment? She complained. Pardon, said Sadzak. I can't hear a thing. It was getting late in the day when the Ragged Dolls finished making their private luxury deck. They had cushions to sit on and a very nice pool made from the life belts and the waterproof sheet. But no water for the pool. I didn't think of that, said Back to Front. Maybe there's a tap somewhere, suggested Lucy. I doubt it, said Dotty. After all, we're more or less on the roof of the ship. That's given me an idea, said Back to Front. We could rig up something to collect rainwater. But it doesn't seem to rain in the Mediterranean, said Lucy. D -d 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 Don't be t -t -t too sure, stammered Hi-Fi. He pointed to some huge black clouds on the horizon. Oh dear, said Dotty. That looks rather like a big storm. And it is heading this way, Nespa, said Claude. It was most peculiar. Behind them, to the west, was a beautiful sunset. But up ahead, the storm was as black as night. It's just like war and peace, thought Sad Sack. The lightning flashed, and the thunder boomed, and the rain fell like a flood. The ship crashed and rolled through mountainous waves as the winds lashed the tarpaulins covering the lifeboat. The Raggy Dolls crouched on their cushions and listened to the raging storm outside. Do you think we're going to sink? whispered Lucy as another bolt of thunder boomed overhead. Of course not, said Dotty. This is a big ship. It's built for waves. I don't feel well said Sad Sack, looking green in the torchlight. I wonder how Mr. and Mrs. Grimes are doing at the fancy dress ball, chuckled back to front. But Mr. and Mrs. Grimes were in their cabin, and Mr. Grimes was lying down and feeling very queasy. Come on, Ozzy, said Mrs. Grimes. We're missing all the fun. Oh, not tonight, Josephine, he groaned. Hm, it looks like my Napoleon has met his Waterloo, she laughed. Please don't mention water, or Lou. The next day, the sun was shining brightly and the sea was as calm as a pond. The Raggy Dolls emerged from their lifeboat, tired after a sleepless night. Let's go and see if our swimming pool is still there, yawned Dotty. I hope it hasn't been washed away. It hadn't, and what's more, it was full of fresh rainwater. Perfect, sighed Princess. We can spend all day beside her own private swimming pool. Eh bien, agreed Claude. Après le déluge, n'est-ce pas? What does that mean? demanded Sad Sack. It means, how you say, it has uh, turned out nice again, said Claude. The Raggy Dolls laughed and spent the rest of the day sunbathing on their cushions and cooling off in their homemade pool whenever they felt like it. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made in perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, Raggy Dolls, Raggy Dolls, 